This is a quick video showing how to share measurement results dynamically so that the output of one measurement parameter can be the input to another measurement parameter. And because the question came up about using x at max and level at x, then I've set this up on this sine wave. So x at max is returning 664. So the x at max parameters gone through, looked at the waveform, found the biggest peak in the waveform, and then it's returning the x position corresponding to that peak. And that 664, we want to push that into level at x, because level at x has a x position input, and you can um, choose any value you want. So we could put in 1.1 microseconds, and 1.1 microseconds after the trigger point, then the x uh, at the x position, 1.1 microseconds, then the level at x is negative 52 millivolts. And what we want to do is every time the scope acquires, take the most recent x at max value, push it into level at x so that it's dynamically updating. And to do that, you can use an xdev script. And xdev is a software option loaded on the scope. And the script is parameter script. And so I'll click on edit code. And the source here is channel one, but because we're gonna be accessing measurement results, um, it doesn't matter which source we use, we can use any of the input channels because we're not actually gonna um, use channel one's data. Instead, we're gonna access measurement parameter results. And the first line of code is making a connection with the scope. So app is assigned to create object. This is, um, this is a com object handle, and we're calling it app so that we can use that abbreviation here instead of needing to use this full path to the com object corresponding to the scope application. So once that's set, then the first line of code is, I just created a variable, I called it x underscore at underscore max, and I'm gonna set it equal to the output result value and the way that I found the path for this was I used the Xtreme browser, which is installed on the scope. And I went to make connection. So I clicked on this button here. And then um, this was in the measure uh, tab. So what looks like file folders here is actually com object folders. And we're going to parameter one and we're looking at the output result. And we can see that the, the value is this app.measure.p1.out result value. So you can just use this um, pathway, copy it and put it into the program. So we can actually see the latest value here. This is that 664 times 10 to the negative seventh is this value right here, 664 nanoseconds. So it stores that value in the variable. And then to push it into parameter two, where level at x has its input right here, um, then we can say app.measure.p2.operator horizontal value equals x at max, and then take that value and push it in. So I put a couple of comments here to show what the code's doing. This one reads x at max from parameter one. This one pushes the current value from uh, the max value into the horizontal value field of level at x each time the scope acquires. So every time it triggers, it takes that uh, latest x at max value, pushes it into level at x. And this is line of code to do it. And the, the way that I um, identified what path to use for that was we knew it was parameter two. And when we go into uh, the Xtreme browser, we can see uh, parameter two. And we're looking at the output result and it has this, um, it has the horizontal value. So we're at uh, app.measure.p2 operator horizontal value, operator, and then horizontal value. So this is where that 1.1 microseconds is. And if we were to, um, if we were to change that, so if we change it to, let's say 1.3 microseconds, then now it's at a different position. That X position here, if we refresh, then it's 1.3. So this is uh, Xtreme browser showing the current 
um, scope properties at all times are stored as com objects and this app.measure.p2.operator.horizontal value is being um, updated. But this time it's being updated by the script and it's using the output value from parameter one as the input value into parameter two's horizontal position. And when we um, run the scope live, then we can see that if we click on level at X, this X position is being updated by the script dynamically. So when the X position changes, then in real time, it will take the X position result from parameter one, push it dynamically into parameter two, and then we get a level at X at the max value each time. The two of them are linked together. A um, couple of other lines of code here that are useful. These, I labeled it as optional display settings because the output result value equals X at max. If we had just set it to zero, for example, then it doesn't matter what the script outputs because the script's performing a function of just dynamically pushing the output result from parameter one into the input of parameter two. We don't really have to display anything, but by displaying exit max, then it's a consistency check to make sure that the script has the correct value because it matches what parameter one has. The next line, and I, I just put a display output value of exit max. This is not needed, but it's only used to confirm that the value was read properly. The next line of code was the vertical units. And this is also optional, so you could set vertical units to anything. We could even make it blank. But I just copied the vertical units from parameter one into parameter three so that as a consistency check, we can check that exit max value and have the same units. And I went to the Xtreme browser and located the com object app.measure.p1.out result vertical units. And the, in the comment, I said, use the same output units as P1. And then the last uh, optional line of code in the script was to choose the resolution for the output display of the script. And so if we, if we removed um, some of the zeros, for example, and update it, then we've got lower resolution. Or if we add some values back in, then what I did was I just put enough zeros in that it matched the resolution of the input value. And now we've got um, uh, a view that matches the, the um, exit max value. But the important part of the script was these lines of code right here that can dynamically copy the output of this one into the input of the next one. And then it runs and, um, and updates dynamically. And we can see it here with X position changing every time the scope acquires. So that's a, that's a quick uh, overview of how to do a dynamic measurement on the scope. And I'll stop the video here.